Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to Jargon Free Help. I'm up here trying to be clever, thinking that this is where birds normally hang out. That's right, the flying kind of birds that is, because I'm thinking of tweeting and Twitter. And I wanted to know more about it because there's a lot of misconceptions in the press about what Twitter is actually like. So I met one of the UK's leading Twitter experts, Mark Shaw, that's markshaw.biz if you want to go and look him up, who guided me through using Twitter properly and I have to say it worked very well. Now before I met Mark I called him something and I owe him a little bit of an apology. Hi Mark, thanks for coming down to talk to me about Twitter and I'm really sorry but when I first met you I said you must be the biggest twit in the UK. Sorry about that, but okay. I think you knew what I meant. I did, yes. But you are one of the leading UK experts on mm -hmm. Twitter, which probably makes you one of the world's leading experts on it. And I've followed your advice, because when we met you gave me a little bit of advice mm -hmm. and I was a bit sceptical at first, thinking, mm -hmm. oh, is this going to work? But straight away, yes. it has worked for me. Brilliant. So you had some tips for me. There were, um, you mentioned uh, engaging people and that, but yes. just remind me of what you told me and how to engage people and the best way to make this work. Well I, well, I think in essence, I've probably reminded you of some of the key rules about Twitter, which is one, that it's not a broadcast medium. A lot of people just come on there and effectively they're just shouting to people. Uh, they're just using it as a one-way stream of information. That really is not appropriate. And when you start to get the most from Twitter is when, yes, you start to send out some things, but you also start to engage people. So what can you do to encourage that? By when, uh, whatever you send out, you put a question at the end. Yep. So, for example, this is what I'm having for lunch, what are you having? This is what I'm doing, what are you doing? That then gets people to come back to you. That then allows you to engage with people, start a conversation. Because at the end of the day, what you're after are advocates. People yep. who get to know, like and trust you. And as I say to all my clients, Twitter allows you to tell us who you are, yep. not just what you do. Okay, so start to tell us more about you, start to be more social, which is one of the things I told you mm -hmm. to do. Okay, have fun with it, be social, start to share some stuff that, that's going on in your life and that you find that's interesting. But also demonstrate your expertise and your knowledge, which I think is really important as well. Have a balance between all three, okay? And in time, with some commitment and in time, people will start to follow you, people will start to engage with you, and things will start happening, as you've just said. Someone also said to me, I think you said this doesn't actually work. If I follow someone, chances are they're going to follow me back. But that's not true, really, is it? That's not really the way to make Twitter work, is it? Absolutely not. Okay. As a golden rule, you know, if you if you just clicked on 100 random people, about 30 mm. of them will follow you straight back. Why? Because they've set something up that automatically follows people back, okay? That okay. really is not what mm -hmm. Twitter's about, okay? I've got a few followers now, based on your advice. But are followers actually a good indication of what's really happening? Because I've noticed that I'm actually getting a lot of people coming from Twitter onto my website, but it's not an indication of how many followers I've got. What you want is not followers, but listeners. Okay. So how do you get a listener? You get a listener by being visible in the community, by being a great resource, by being helpful, sharing, showing up all the time, answering questions, being the go-to person. Okay. And then what happens is people start to find you because you're providing great content mm -hmm. and people start to follow you. Not because you followed them in the first place. That's what you're after. Listeners, not so much right. followers. But then how do you know who's listening and who's following? Because obviously following you can see you have got 11 followers yes. or like you've got 12,500 followers. Something like that, last, yes. Last count. But how do you know who's listening? Okay. When you start to send out messages, what you'll often find is some of the same sort of people start to engage back with you. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the same sort of people start to retweet your messages to their network of people. So you start mm -hmm. to build up a good core group of people that will uh, refer you, that will retweet your messages to their network, and that will just gradually start to engage with you. Now, out of all the people that follow you, will they all be doing that? No. I think mm -hmm. it's very much probably the 80-20 rule in life that seems mm -hmm. to apply to everything. But you'll get a core group that will advocate and refer you. That's what you're after. Just what is retweeting? A couple of really important things. Firstly, what is it? Okay, A retweet is simply when you see some content that's been provided by somebody else and you pick up that message and you then send it out to your followers. So for example, if you mm -hmm. sent out a message, something about podcasting which you do, okay, yeah. I could see that message and then pick it up and forward it then on to my followers. What is the benefit to you? Suddenly, your single message, you said you had 11 followers, okay? Mm -hmm. 
your single message to your 11 followers, me being one, I've seen it, and I've now retweeted it to my network. Suddenly your message gets in front of 12,500 people. Mm -hmm. So anyone who says Twitter's a waste of time, I'd argue all day long, because that to me is a very good use of time. That's leveraging your time, yeah. taking you 10 seconds, and suddenly you've got 12,500 people looking at that. So some golden rules. One, how do you get more retweets? And two, mm -hmm. what should you retweet? Okay, mm -hmm. so what should you retweet? Number one, I wouldn't retweet anything where well, I hadn't checked the link out first. Okay, is it taking you to I'm about to rip you off dot com or whatever? And secondly, is it something that when I get there, my grandma would be proud if she saw it on a billboard with my name above the door? Okay, so that's my sort of golden rule. If it fills those two things, then it'd be happy that I'd forward that on. How do I get more retweets or how do people get more retweets? It's very simple. Number one, it depends on how many characters they put in the message. So let me explain. When someone presses the retweet button or wants to retweet a message, by taking it and then pasting it into the message to send out, it starts at the beginning, RT at Twitter username. So that adds about 20 characters to the message. If their message is 139 characters long, there's now not enough room in the message to have all that. So now I have to edit the message to make it all fit. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to edit the message. I can't be bothered. So the chances of getting a retweet when your text is too long is much smaller. So golden rule number two, about 115 characters, top whack, is how much you should use. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing which I advise people is to have what I would call killer headlines. Okay. Mm -hmm. A lot of people market, and the way they market things is what I would call the kitchen sink approach. They want to put the whole thing in the message. With Twitter, you don't do that. What you do is you have a very simple message and a link to where you want to send them. The idea here is that you want website traffic. So you have a headline, for example, seven top ways to podcast, link to site. That's it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to add anything else. Okay. I'll then see that. I'll then forward that on. OK, so great headlines. You know, you often see, you know, with newspapers, you know, Mandelson says no, but you don't know what it is until you buy the newspaper. Same with Twitter. Yeah. Great headline that's enough to get them intrigued to what it is and a link to where you want to send them. That's it. That's how to get more retweets. Right. With the URLs that you've got in there, you use bit.ly. I think you called it bit.ly. Is that to keep it short so that it actually fits on your on your tweets? Okay, Twitter's all about 140 characters, as mm -hmm. you just said. Some of the domain names are incredibly long, and they can be mm -hmm. 1,800 characters long. So quite a lot of the services now offer a shortening URL service. And all you simply do is take the usual website address you've just mentioned, you convert it to a shortened URL, mm -hmm. and then that's what you put in the Twitter message. Okay, so I've been using Twitter, and there's a couple of symbols, and I just want to know a little bit about what they are. What is the hash, and what is the at symbol for? What do they mean? The at just denominates, it's an at reply. Okay, mm -hmm. so you're sending, so I would go at Twitter username and that would be a reply. And mm -hmm. what Twitter then does is it sees that and it makes it, it looks as though it's a hyperlink. You can click straight on it and come to your profile. So that's the reason why you have an at reply. Yeah. Okay, as far as a hashtag is concerned, that's all about search. Okay, and what you want, suppose you had an event mm -hmm. or you had a, a podcast or something going on where you want everybody to see everybody's comments about that particular thing, then somewhere in that sentence you would denominate it with a hashtag and say a word or a small little acronym for the event so that everybody could see in one place in the search everything to do with that event in one place. So if I've, should I be putting a hash when I say jargon free help on my tweets? Okay, no. Okay. Firstly, it's far too long for a hashtag because you've only got it 140 yeah. characters. Okay. Uh, and because it's in the word, because it's in the sentence, right. if someone typed in jargon free help, it would show up. But let's suppose uh, we went to an event. Let's suppose we're going to an event next week, the Late mm -hmm. Late Breakfast Show. Okay. Yeah. That has a hashtag LLBS. Yeah. So what's great about that is that everyone before they go at the event and after the event can see any tweet with hashtag LLBS in it. So right. it brings it all under one roof. And okay. that's one of the main uses of using it. You've mentioned about searching on Twitter. How do you actually go about searching? Because I'm only just discovering Twitter and I didn't know you could actually search and how you would actually get found on there. And do you need an account to search? Okay, 
Okay, so I'll answer those actually in, in, the, in, the, in the different order. Secondly, no, you don't need an account to search Twitter. Yeah. Anybody can go to the URL search.twitter.com. That is Twitter's own search engine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it is an interesting story. Someone asked me a few months ago, which is better, Google search or Twitter search? Okay, and the answer sort of it, it's a depends answer. Let's so suppose you wanted to go to Bali on holiday. You type into Google, want to go to Bali on holiday. What you'll get is results for travel agents, flights, cruises, hotels, all that stuff. Brilliant. Now imagine you're a hotel in Bali. Mm -hmm. okay. How do you find people who want to come to your hotel? Okay. You can't through Google. Google mm -hmm. doesn't show you people. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So what you can use is use Twitter's search engine. Why? Because Twitter is going to show you real people talking about real stuff in real time right now. And somewhere in there, you may well find someone saying, I'm looking to go on holiday in Bali. Where should I stay? That's a customer with an issue right yeah. now where you have the solution. That makes perfect sense. Okay, And yeah. that's where the money is, for want of a better expression, on Twitter, in the search. Yes. And more people need to hang out in the search because in the search you can find your competitors, your collaborators, suppliers, clients, customers, all sitting there. But they're having conversations about stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, And what you need to do is eavesdrop on that conversation and when appropriate, engage or talk to those people. Now there are tools out there for doing automation where you can automatically get it to tweet and reply for you and things like that. Do you think they're actually a good idea? I'm a very big fan of nothing automation on Twitter. I believe in being personal, being transparent, responding in a personal fashion to everything that's going on. So I don't recommend that. One of the things about Twitter is a lot of people are very skeptical about it. So what are the biggest misconceptions about Twitter? In the media, the thing that gets constantly talked about all day long is celebrities talking about banal bits of information, selling nothing, and all that sort of stuff. That's what Twitter is. And that keeps getting perpetuated by the news and the TV and the stuff. And I think that's the biggest challenge is that because that's all people hear about, they don't mm. see it has any business angle to it at all. And my sort of role in this year and sort of next year really is to educate as many people to say to them, look, you know, there is a social side to this and you do need to be social and have fun with it and, and interact and so on. But there's a serious business angle to it as well. You just need to how to be effect how to learn how to be effective, how to be useful with your time. Okay, where the right places to go? Don't keep throwing darts in the air and hoping something's going to land. Where's the right places to go? Where should you be hanging out? How to make best use of your time and resources that you have available? Um, and in time, with commitment and with consistency and so on, things will start to happen for you. Secondly, is Twitter a substitute for other things? No. Okay, you don't stop doing your face-to-face -face networking or your emails or your newsletter or anything. Else. It's a bolt-on. You should add it to your mix of other things you do, okay, and give it the energy and resource that you need, okay. Um, and so once you start to do that, you start to learn about the search, about where you can engage with people. It can really start to provide you with a lot of website traffic, which will get you some more activity. If I was looking at it based in the media, I would have probably gone, "This is just a waste of time." But but also I think I think that goes back to a, a really important point about Twitter is that why do people want to join in the first place? Okay, and mm. it's a serious question I need to answer. Them. Is it for fun, like you've just said, to find out just information? Is it to find collaborators, competitors? Is it purely for to get new clients, customers? Mm -hmm. Is it customer services? Can be a great way to be customer service. Is it just information, education? So, and it can be all the above. And there's no right or wrong. It's not for me to tell you how to use it. It's just for me to highlight what you can use it for, and then f to teach you how to be effective and find what you're looking for. But if all you want to do is find out, you know, I follow the BBC News, travel reports. I think I was also following the NASA thing and there was an astronaut who was tweeting from space and stuff. Yeah. So some of it can be fun as well and it doesn't all have to be serious as well and I would no. encourage it to be fun as well. So what do people need to do to get started on Twitter? First thing you need to do is go to twitter.com, which is completely free, and you'll see a big box that says join the conversation. So sign up for an account, okay? Completely free, takes you about five minutes. Um, once you get an account, I've sort of broken it down. The first thing I would call it is C is for commitment. Okay, so be committed to it. Put up a nice photo, not Darth Vader, a nice photo of yourself, not your logo or your icon. People typically want to talk to people. 
I okay. need to change that. Um, okay. So put a nice photo of yourself, um, write a nice bio. Uh, it's only 160 characters, so it's not war and peace, and it should you know, cater four things, your expertise, how can you help people, and as much personal information as you'd like to share. Bearing in mind that, it, that you can search people's bios. One of the ways you can find people in similar industries or whatever you're looking for is you can search on the keywords in their bio. Make sure you add your website details. And essentially, that's then your profile. Okay, so be committed to it. Next thing is be consistent. What is consistent means it means showing up every day and doing a little bit. Twitter doesn't work if you shout a bit for an hour and then don't come back for a month. You're sort of wasting your time. It's like the village pub, you know, if you turn up once, shout, no one listens to. If you go in every day, get friendly with the locals, then you can start to talk to them. So turn up every day and I would encourage you to do 15, 20 minutes a day, that sort of level. Okay, not 20 minutes before breakfast and nothing the rest of the day, mm -hmm. but spread out through the day. So be consistent, be committed, be consistent. Thirdly, be interesting. So start to tweet out stuff, you know, in the sort of three categories we've talked about. Social chit chat, what are you doing, encouraging people to talk to you. Sharing of things that you find that is either on your own website or that you find in general. And demonstrating your expertise and your knowledge, which you do in two ways. You either tell people stuff and the answers are on your website, or you invite questions in. So you could be inviting questions about how do I start podcasting, what are the keys to podcasting, any questions about pod, and then you hang around and answer those questions. Mm -hmm. So you're inviting questions in. And then you start to do that, you become interesting, okay? And then fourthly, you become interested in other people. How do you do that? You see people that you can reply to. So likewise, if I'm saying what I'm doing, you reply back. Start to do those four things with a nice profile, turning up every day, that's the first sort of step to Twitter. And finally, have fun with it. It's not gonna happen overnight. It takes months to build this thing up and bolt it on to other things that you do. So Mark, that's been brilliant. I've been following you at Mark Shaw, which is brilliant. And I recommend that people do that as well because you learn a lot by just watching how you Twitter. I'm also gonna sign up to your beginner's guide because I think that'll be really good which is cheese sandwich at aweber.com. And I'm also going to get your daily tip as well, which is Twitterverse at aweber.com. Absolutely brilliant. I aspire to get into where you get to. You've got 12,500 followers and probably a lot more people listening. I'm going to become a bigger twit, I think. I think a lot of people would think I'm probably a big enough twit anyway. But Mark, that's been brilliant. Thanks very much. Well, that's really good, useful information from Mark. So we're going to take a look now at what this week's apps of the week are. This week's apps are really obvious because Mark's actually already mentioned them. They were Seismic, TweetDeck and Hootsuite. I have been using TweetDeck but now I'm going to try Hootsuite as well and to see how much better that is. He does say it is better. They're all free so definitely worth giving it a go. Try using Twitter yourself. A lot of people I know have been very skeptical including myself and by using the apps I've been able to do it on a regular basis. Follow me as well, you might actually find out some interesting stuff and also get all the alerts to when the next episodes of Jargon Free Help come out. And now for this week's new tutorials. Many of you are writing in suggesting tutorials and as always I try to respond to them by creating them for you. This week Kim wrote to me asking me for some tutorials on how to create charts in Excel. Some of us might call them graphs, but anyway, I've created some now, how to create pie charts, 3D charts, and how to alter them as well. So keep them coming, and I will actually try and respond to as many tutorials as I can. Next week, I'm going to be taking a look at keeping kids safe online, so come back and watch us then. We have also introduced Jargon Free Business, which is actually aimed at businesses and IT, and first up is actually Mark's interview on Twitter, but it is actually longer and a bit more focused on business. So if you want to know a bit more about using Twitter or a bit more about using Twitter for business, click on our link to Jargon Free Business and you'll actually learn a little bit more. Thanks for watching and see you next week.